This is probably the weirdest printer I have ever worked with. This is the Positron V3.2 by Krylin and LDO, a tiny printer that prints upside down on a glass bed and also it folds. I first heard of this printer ages ago, like a, a really long time ago before LDO were involved and I thought, why? I mean, why the upside downness? Yeah, so it turns out that because the actual XY motion system is at the very bottom, that makes it more stable. Actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because most 3D printers have their XY motion system at the very top, or it goes to the top as the print progresses. Any tiny movement or effort on one end will make that wobble worse. Having most quick movements at the base reduces that wobble and makes the system more stable. So that's why. The other interesting thing about this printer is the folding. Now, this is not for everyone. Most people are pretty happy having their 3D printer in one place and it staying there always. But I have had several occasions where I needed to showcase a printer in a different location and I had to transport one of those printers, the smallest one if possible. Anyone who's ever moved a printer like to a different house or to an office or something, um, you know that there's a risk you can damage it in the process. And printers are bulky. Like even the small ones can be bulky, not necessarily heavy, just awkward to move. So this is great because you can cram this guy into a spool box and unpack and unfold and have it completely ready for printing in under two minutes. Although the kit also does come with this lovely Pelican case for extra security. But the weirdness doesn't end there. This uses a glass bed, a glass bed. I haven't seen one of those in a long time, but it's not just a build surface. The heater is actually integrated into the glass. It has an ITO coating. This is an oxide of indium and tin that is electrically conductive, but also transparent. It has a Bowden extruder based on the orbiter extruder slapped onto the Z-axis. The hot end is a custom Fetus hot end, but weirder because it makes a 90 degree turn. Here's the PTFE tube, and here is the nozzle. The board is custom. LDO designed this themselves and look how it fits into the base. That is adorable. Perfect, really. I've never seen a more perfectly fit mainboard. The clipper processor is actually in the touch control and it is really easy to set up because the SD card is already flashed. So you just need to put that in and start the printer up and you're basically ready. It has a tool head board with an accelerometer. So if mods are made to the tool head, you can just run a calibration again. And there are already mods. This is technically a HBOP printer similar to a Core XY, but with all of these pulleys and three millimeter belts on the XY axis, it might deserve its own name. The original design actually used a synchro mesh chain, but this has been changed to a three millimeter GT2 belt on the XY axis. The original chains were difficult to source, and if they broke, it would create a huge mess. Looking at the upside down print process with the opportunity to see the first layer through the glass is sort of surreal. I guess that's one way to see if your first layer is perfect. That's why this is the weirdest printer I have ever worked with, but it is weird in ways that make sense. There is method to this madness. And this is a printer kit, but guys, if you have ever assembled a Voron kit, even just a V0, then this is an absolute walk in the park. I was expecting the assembly process to be complicated and finicky. I don't know how long my V0 build took. It was spread out over many evenings. It, it took a really long time. Uh, but this, however, I did this in three evenings and I have never been more surprised with a build kit. So yeah, this is a kit and it's a very, very easy kit. So I thought I would share my process of building it. All right, so if you rotate yourself to the LDO Motion website, you will find your guide on how to assemble the Positron, which is divided into 10 non-equal portions. I say this because step one to seven is easy as pie, but it is only step eight and nine that are the heavy ones. And I am somewhat inclined not to say heavy because it's really just putting parts one to seven all together and tightening a lot of screws. So not really heavy, just time consuming compared to the previous steps. I thought of doing a really thorough guide on how to assemble the Positron, but because everything is so clear, it would actually have been pointless and a lot of shots of me screwing in M3 bolts. Nobody wants to see that for several hours or any other unit of time. Okay, let's start off with the extruder. In this part, you will see all the things that you need to print as well as screws, bearings, idlers, springs, and whatnot that come with the kit. This is really easy. It took about 15 minutes and if you have ever assembled an orbiter extruder before, it is pretty much the same thing. You should end up with this. 
I really love the Orbiter Extruder, but the only advantage it has here is its size. The low weight of an Orbiter is pretty much useless here because, yeah, it's in a Bowden configuration. Still, size matters when you're designing a folding printer. Next up is the Z column, and this is mostly just installing the rail to the extrusion and the Z idler latch, which is an ingenious little spring with a ball bearing that keeps the idler pulley tense when you tighten the belts. There are a lot of pulleys and idlers with this kit. Watch out, it might be confusing. The carriage is a CNC aluminium part, and yes, there are a few of these in the kit, also with some carbon fiber parts too. I think these are the only T-nuts in the kit, thank god, I hated these on the V0. These attach the rail to the extrusion, and yeah, that is a hefty rail. When you're done the Z column, it should look a bit like this. The Z drive is next, and like the extruder, it uses the orbiter design to provide more torque for such a small motor. The bed holder is next, and this is really simple. It's just this arm with groove vents on the ends. This is one part of what makes the Positron so easy to assemble and reassemble. The bed is just slotted into place and screwed in tight. Ridiculously simple, ridiculously easy. This is the touch panel with the clipper processor on board. Nothing to see here but a touchscreen, mount, and SD card. Ah, the hot end. Yeah, so as mentioned, it is a Fetus hot end with a V6 nozzle and the filament turns 90 degrees at the heater block. Weird. Next up is the spool holder, so basically just a couple of bearings and printed parts. Easy peasy. Now we're putting together everything we just assembled into a nice base. One note on this is to get all your wiring lined up and routed well. It's important this is done before the base is covered over. Some cables will be hard to route after the base is complete. The mainboard, power PCB, and motors will screw into the base plate and you'll add some standoffs where the linear rail will go. After that you can install the side panels and the parts we assembled in previous steps. Then the carbon fiber top covers can go on. You should have something like this. The last part is installing the Z column to the base. After that's done there's a lot of pulleys to include, quite a lot of pulleys actually. You can then add the bearings to the planter gear and then the actual gear themselves. And then the motor and your extruder is complete. Again, lots more pulleys. So many pulleys. After the belt is rooted along these pulleys and the tool head is added, this is pretty much just the PCB and the hot end, you should be able to do a little motion test. I really like this kit. The build is so easy compared to others I have done, like the V0. And the build volume is actually larger than the V0. The V0 is 120 by 120. This one is 180 by 180. And the V0 had so many tiny parts and blind joints and a million T-nuts that you would have to preload and then several steps later you would actually put the screws in. The Positron doesn't have this issue. So many parts are slot in and barely any threaded inserts are used compared to Voron builds. One issue though was that a lot of the screws that I was using, they didn't screw into threads. They actually screwed into printed parts, even though they weren't self-tapping screws, they were just normal bolts. That, that was weird first time using it, but so far everything seems to be working okay. But the space is used so wisely in this build, and that's why you can get a printer which in general, the device size is quite similar to a V0, but the build volume is much higher, and you can fold it. Of course, the real draw here is the folding nature. The V0 is small and can be mobile, sure, but it is not designed to be stowed and could get damaged during a move. This just fits into a spool box, which is nuts. I will be testing this more and give my final thoughts once it has been put through its paces, but if you guys have any questions about the Positron, then let us know. You can write us down below in a comment, you can send us an email, or you can join us on our Discord server. So let us know, and we'll see you there. Later. <laughs>